Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are about to embark on our year of honors chemistry, so let's begin at the beginning, which is chapter one, and chapter one is about matter and change. So we always start with the question, what is chemistry? Good to define what we're going to be learning about. And the definition of chemistry, spoiler alert, this will appear on a test, uh, the definition of chemistry is chemistry is the study of the composition, structure, and properties of matter, as well as the processes that matter undergoes and the energy changes that accompany these processes. So there are branches of chemistry, and there are six main branches, um, but actually they all kind of overlap, and we'll see that as we start to talk our way through the six branches of chemistry. So we start with organic chemistry, and organic chemistry is the study of most carbon-containing compounds. And examples are things like propane and ethanol, other alcohols, uh, fuels, which would be petrochemicals. So the way you know it's organic is the con compounds will contain carbon, which leads to compounds that don't contain carbon, and that is inorganic chemistry. So the study of compounds that do not contain carbon is called inorganic chemistry. And many of these can have organic fragments as well. And when that happens, for instance, an organic substance combined to a metal, then it would be call, called organometallics or organometallic chemistry. So inorganic is the study of chemistry that does not contain carbon. And many of the acids and bases that we talk about and minerals would be inorganics. We'll also encounter some organometallics that'll have organic fragments. So then we get into physical chemistry, and that's the study of the properties and changes of matter and their relation to energy. And so questions that a physical chemist would ask is, is this compound going to react? Will it explode? Will it melt? Is it going to stretch? Will it break? Is it brittle? All of those things are concerns of the physical chemist. Then you have analytical chemistry. And analytical chemistry is the identification of the components and composition of materials. So when you make something, then you kind of have to analyze it and figure out what's in it. Um, other applications are anytime you go for a test that your doctor orders, a blood test, uh, for instance, they're looking at the components that are inside of that sample. So they might be looking for, in a blood sample, white blood cells, uh, fats that may be present, red blood cells, uh, platelets, all those kinds of things. So again, if we're talking about the blood test again, is there blood, uh, is there uh, lead present in the blood sample? Is there, are there contaminants or is there a particular drug present? So all of those kinds of things are analytical chemistry questions. And then there's biochemistry. And that's the study of the substances and processes occurring in living things. So last year in biology class, you were studying living things, and you also got into some of the chemistry when you talked about things like DNA and RNA and um, proteins and lipids and um, monosaccharides and disaccharides. All of those things are organic chemistry as well as biochemistry. So all of the processes, respiration, digestion, amino acids, genetics, all of those things are biochemistry. And I like to pause here and just think about, let's say right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and lots of people, lots of labs are trying to find two things really, vaccines and drug candidates to treat people who might have a virus. So the biochemists are involved because they're talking about specific processes and they're talking about how those drug candidates will interact with, for instance, the human body. They also have to be organic chemists because 
Most of these compounds are going to be carbon-based, so there's organic, and then the analytical chemists are going to be looking at what happens when that particular vaccine is injected into someone's body, how it is behaving and what it's doing, the physical chemists will get involved as well. So I give this example to show you how there's this overlap and that you're not just a biochemist or just an organic chemist or just a biologist. They're all interrelated. And then there's theoretical chemistry. And that's the chemists that are using mathemat mathematics, computer modeling, um, and they're using those to understand the principles behind these observed chemical behaviors. And again, to design and predict the properties of new compounds. So theoretical chemistry takes uh, a part, plays a part in, for instance, designing drug therapies to deal with, for instance, the coronavirus or cancer or any of the other things, arthritis, any diseases. You would also include theoretical chemistry to help model what kinds of things that could be used to solve a particular problem. So what is a chemical? And when we're talking about chemicals in chemistry class, we mean any substance that has a definite composition or is used or produced in a chemical process. And we'll talk a little bit more about chemical processes as we move forward through the year. So then we need to talk about types of research. And I've just been giving you examples about people who are working on ways to find therapies and vaccines, for instance, for the coronavirus. So what types of research are we talking about? So basic research is research that is carried out to increase knowledge. Applied research is research that's carried out to solve a practical problem. So right now, um, to deal with this pandemic that we're in, basic research is being used to further our knowledge to understand what's going on with, for instance, the coronavirus. And applied research, we're using things we already know and have on hand to help us solve a practical problem, for instance, finding a vaccine or a therapy for the coronavirus. And then technological development is something that uses existing knowledge to make our life easier and more convenient. So when I worked in research, basic research usually was much more long-term research. Let's just do some stuff that may have an application 10 to 20 years in the future. Applied research is more immediate. We have a problem right now, like a pandemic. How are we going to solve the current problems and deal with them? And then technological development is something that gets moved forward and results from the other two types of research. So technological development includes things like our computers, our cell phones, all of the things that are the result of research and development. And if you hear snoring in the background, I apologize. My dog is in the room and she's snoring right now and barking in her sleep. So I apologize if you can hear that. So this is the intro section of our honors chemistry class and there's more to follow in this chapter. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.